we are going to do, do the best we can. I know there's a few verses here, but we're going to do the best we can to complete the chapter so that we've completed the chapter here by the end of the week, and then we'll jump into chapter 6, uh, obviously, next week. Um, yesterday, we talked about how Daniel had refused uh, the gift, had refused the accolades of Belshazzar. I don't want it, Belshazzar. Uh, you are proud, just like Nebuchadnezzar was. You did not learn his lesson. Look at verse 22. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled, thy, humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. We talked about the accountability of our knowledge, the accountability of knowing what other generations have not known. Verse number 23, but thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the, the vessels of the house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver, gold, brass, iron, wood, stone, which see not, hear not, or nor, nor know, and the God in, in whose hand thy breath is. Now think about this. The God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, thou hast not glorified. What a statement. Uh, Belshazzar, you knew that God revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar. You knew that Jehovah God is the real God. And you chose to uh, denigrate that God, to uh, take the vessels and have a drunken party with all your buddies and all your family. And you have willingly, willfully uh, defied the God who holds your breath, who controls your life, Sometimes we talk about the fragility of life by talking about every breath that we take. Or sometimes we'll talk about the fragility of life when we talk about you know, the, the, the beating of the heart. And what Daniel is saying here is, uh, Belshazzar, don't you understand that you owe every breath to God? I mean, think about it this morning. Just take a breath. I mean, that breath came from God. Now, we, we, were con we were consciously aware of that, but every breath, as you breathe through the night, as you do go about your day, you don't think about breathing. It's an in in involuntary thing that we do. You don't think about your heart beating. But do you know that you have a finite number of breaths in your life? Do you know that you have a finite number of heartbeats in your life? A finite number of days? You know, if you live to be age... Uh, 70, you'll only live about 25,000 days. That's not a whole lot of time. And every one of them belongs to God. At Belshazzar, you were not cognizant of the fact that you are his creation and therefore should live for his glory. Okay, look at verse number 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written. Okay, so now is the time that Daniel is actually going to uh, interpret the, the writing. Now, what's interesting is he's already rebuked Belshazzar. So if Belshazzar had any holdout in his mind that he might receive good news from Daniel, I'm sure that those hopes have now been dashed. As Daniel has come in, as Daniel has said, you're not going to buy me off. Uh, you're not going to flatter me. I'm going to tell you what God said, but I can already tell you what you're doing is wrong. He already has rebuked him for his behavior, and now he's going to read and interpret what God has said with the writing on the wall. Verse 25, this is the writing that was written. Mene, M-E-N-E, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Eupharsin or peres would be the root of that. Mini, mini, tekel, eupharsin. So therein is the enigma, okay? Because the message has come in these one word increments, one word that maybe the one word could have been understood among the uh, magicians and soothsayers. Although some Bible scholars believe that the words were written in Hebrew and that's why maybe the Babylonian 
Um, wise men couldn't understand it. But whatever the case may be, the, the message is in somewhat of an enigma because it's only in these one word um, kind of summarizing words. So what, what do these words mean? Okay, well, the word mine, mini, means number or numeration. So God has numbered your kingdom uh, is what Daniel is going to show Belshazzar that this means, numeration. The, the middle word, tekel, refers to weighing, as one would weigh on a scale, weighing. So numeration, mine, um, tekel would be weighing. And then uh, eupharsin is the word division. I had to check that out, I forgot. So uh, numeration, weighing, and then division is the actual word. So what's the message? The message is God has numbered you, maybe numbered your days, maybe given uh, Belshazzar a certain number of days to repent, a certain season of grace, a certain season of long suffering. Uh, remember, uh, during the days of the flood, the Bible uses that language. Uh, during the days of judgment in the tribulation, there's a set number of days. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, my spirit shall not always strive with man. And so we need to be cognizant of the days that God does draw lines when we've crossed his mercy. And so numeration, weighing. I, I now after these days, um, Belshazzar, I have, weighed, I have weighed you. I've weighed your motives, weighed your actions, weighed your life, and you're found wanting. You've come up short. And uh, Eupharsin or Pires, a division, therefore your kingdom will be divided. Your kingdom will be taken, separated from you. Okay, look at what it says here in verse number 26. This is the interpretation of the thing. Amine, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Pires, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So all of that false bravado, all of that false security that um, Belshazzar had, uh, I can eat and drink, I can flout the God of Israel, I can party with my buddies, uh, my uh, defenses will protect me, my city is impregnable, the Medes and Persians have no chance, not realizing that his own dad, Nabonidus, is already now dead. Look at verse 29, then commanded Belshazzar, they clothed Daniel with scarlet, they put a chain of gold upon his neck, they made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Well, Daniel said, I don't want your awards. I don't want your accolades. I don't want your rewards. And yet Belshazzar does it anyway. You know why? Because I think Belshazzar is grasping. He's grasping. Oh, oh, I was wrong. And Daniel, you were right. And Daniel, here's these accolades. And here's, here's this, this fine robe. And here's this position of honor. And but guess what, Belshazzar? It's too late. It's too late. And the awards and rewards and honors, they're all superfluous at this point. Why? Because your kingdom is done right now. And Daniel didn't want the honor. And these lords in front of whom you're giving this, these great honors, they're going to be dead in a day's time. Why? Because even now, the Medes and Persians are making their way into the city. It's an it's a incredible a military thing. Obviously, we know that God is the one that delivered Babylon into the Medes and Persians. But historically, what they did is they, they changed, they di diverted the flow of the Euphrates River on which Babylon is built. And they... Um, so that way the water level went far down so that the gates and the bars of the city that were um, underwater, now, they, now that the water level has gone down, they can get under those gates. So it was a masterful thing. So they can get out of, they can get under the outer wall, but that still lives, leaves the inner wall and the inner gates. But the Bible says uh, inexplicably uh, to man, and historians tell us inexplicably the inner gates were not locked. 
And you can read all about that in Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. God tells us this is going to happen hundreds of years before it happens. Uh, uh, the, Jeremiah references this as well. well. What's happening? God is honoring his word. God is in control. Look at verse number 20, verse number 30. In that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. That night, that very night. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. So what a story. What, um, what an example of just pride, of opportunity wasted, of long-suffering ignored, of a man whose life became a colossal failure because he snubbed his nose at God. And yet there's Daniel, humble, faithful, following. And we're going to see another great example of that next week. So I hope you'll join us. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your local church services, and we will see you on Monday.